We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Father, we return praise, adoration to you today. Holy Spirit, come down and speak to us. We are in a very tempting time, a time that you are looking up to your church, the saints in the world. Help them contributing all you can to make sure they survive this season. Father, open the eyes of our understanding today. Let there be light in our hearts. That was a mighty word. Chaos and darkness heard and took their flight. Hear us, we humbly pray. And we are the gospel pray, shed not its light. We say, let there be light today. Cover the whole of this environment with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of God, take charge. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. The topic is Signs of the End. Signs of the end, the end time. In the morning, we did an introductory work on this. It's my prayer that God will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Let's open our Bibles to Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Second Thessalonians 2 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except ye come a falling away first, and that man and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed and exalted himself. Above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he, as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is the revelation called God from God about the time of the end. Being one of the sons of Issachar, not by tribe, not by genealogy, but having the same spirit of knowing the times, Paul saw beyond his present time, and he saw many years to come, and that before the end must come, the Antichrist must be revealed first. And if you look at the world today, there is no particular devil we can pinpoint and say this is the Antichrist. But the Bible tells us that the Antichrist is already in operation. How do we know that we are in the end time? We want to look at an aspect, three major things that are actually happening today. And the word that embraced them all is the word globalization. Globalization. Which means the coming together of the whole human race. To live as one again, as it was before the birth of languages, as man planned before in the time of Babel. 
In Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9, something happened there. After God destroyed the world with water, children were born unto Noah. I mean, the children of Noah, his three sons. So the children now said, ah, let's come together again. We don't know the mind of this God. We have been seeing this rainbow, but this God may just change his mind one day. So let's come together. Let's build a city and make a name for ourselves. So they came together, and as they were building, God got a report in heaven. They are the children of men have gathered together. They said, any time you are coming again, they are going to build a skyscraper that will get to heaven, that will touch heaven. So in case you want to bring flood, they will not climb to you. And so that they will not scatter all over the face of the earth. Against the wish of God. When God created the world, he said, replenish the earth, fill the earth, dominate this world. He said, man should increase and dominate the whole world. But these people said, we are not going to dominate the other parts of this world, except this particular place we call Babel. Though then, it wasn't named the Babel. So, when God came, God said, these people, their gathering is not for me. The word of God says, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. So long as the gathering is not for God, what will be the result? They must scatter. So God said, if man in this, their few number can gather together like this and fight against me, and make a name for themselves. To take glory. If I don't do something now, then it's going to be very, very terrible. Genesis chapter 1 and 2, where we have the record of creation, there is no place in the Bible where God said, where the Bible says, and God created language. There was nothing like language. But man was communicating. So there was just one language. God said, now I am going to put confusion in your midst and scatter you. God dropped from heaven the spirit of tongues. And people started speaking different languages. And that is why we have Urobo, Shekiri, Ibo. If somebody tells me that uh, this is the Babel of Africa, Nigeria, I will not doubt. Because Nigeria alone has over 360 something languages. No wonder we have a lot of confusion. May the Lord unite us as one in the name of Jesus. And today, for the Antichrist to come and be enthroned again, he must seize three things in this world. And that is what the devil is working towards. The devil wants to take charge of religion. He wants to take charge. He also wants to take charge of our economy. He also wants to take charge of the government of this world. And from time to time, everything. Let me not say everything. Many things are working together for the actualization of the emergence of the Antichrist. We are in the end time. This is the very end time. I said in the morning that I don't believe the earth is going to stay for another 6,000 years again. Because if Jesus is so close now. He is very close. He's just by the door. Just by the door. Satan is ready. Jesus is ready to come again. Satan, he has overweighted for Jesus. He has prepared all his agents for the Antichrist. For his own government. But we Christians, the church of today is not ready. These three groups has to be ready. But the church today is not ready. It's not ready. In fact, many of us, we don't even need Christ. Why will you pray for Jesus to come? When the car you bought, you've not taken it to the village. The new car. You've not arrived there. When the new house has not been dedicated. 
When we want breakthrough, now, nah, now, nah, now, nah. when the miracles are not yet around, why will Jesus come now? At least to the average Christian, we should enjoy life in full here. The paradise should come from heaven. Jesus should stay, should remain there. He should just send the kingdom and let us enjoy the kingdom here. Today, there is a move in this world to make sure the kingdoms of this world is united. The religions of this world is united. The economy of this world is united as one. So that the Antichrist can be a throne. Look at your Bible. Look at your Bible again. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, he said, No man deceive, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. That means the second coming of Christ will not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. The man of sin, known as the Antichrist, he said, he must come first. He must be revealed first. Everything is set. Jesus is just causing a revival all over the world so that his children can wake up. When they wake up and he looks at the number, he said, yes, this number, I can come and harvest this one. And the Bible says, if the days had not been cut short, if God had not shortened the days because of the persecution, because of the wise of the devil, no soul would have been saved. That it will, would have been so easy for the devil to deceive even the very elect. The one God said, before I gave birth to you, before I sent you into this world, I know you. The Bible says, even those ones, if the days, if God did not shorten the days at all, they will not even make it. There is a call from the very heart of God. That we should wake up. The church is sleeping. I don't know why the church of today, instead of causing spiritual revival in the church, they go and invite Agodai to church. I was passing by, I saw this man who is such God, he saw Jesus, and he saw Christians, he saw pastors. Go down. Invited to one church, he will be insulting our God, we will be clapping for him, clap for him, clap for him. Hey, God, 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 when he wants to leave, we see carry God's money and give to him for insulting our God. Because the joy, the joy of the Lord is reducing. You know, when David sinned against God, he discovered that the joy of the salvation of the Lord was no more. And he said, Lord, restore back to me the joy of your salvation and renew within me a right spirit. Because of sin, this joy, the level of this joy is not stable. So people are replacing entertainment with the joy of the Lord. People want to get artificial, artificial happiness. So they can bring somebody who knows nothing about God, who will insult our God and said, eh, God just opened one heaven one day and said, the eh, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, it don't finish. Use blood of God. And Christians will be laughing. Last year I had a revelation. I saw the face of somebody, I can't describe it, but I saw the face of somebody, a man, the face was so sorrowful and was talking. If, if um, this, the voice was sounding as if the person was shedding tears. The person was saying, so any joke you want to crack now, if you don't use my name, so you mean you cannot derive happiness? Must you insult me first before you get happiness? Today, the religion of this world is gradually coming together. So that when the religion comes together, Satan we have the very, take the slightest opportunity and produce the Antichrist. Who will become a global totalitarian dictator. Who is going to dictate, say, this is what I want. And people will say, yes, sir. This word, secretism, it is a combination of different, often seemingly contra 
contradictory beliefs while combining practices of various schools of thought. That means merging religions together, bringing this one, bringing the other one, and merge all of them together as one. And this is what people are doing today. There is a religion that has been formed by man, Christlam. Christianity and Islam. And the people at the forefront of this movement, they are people that we so much cherish. It's in Nigeria. Islam is in Nigeria. It's already in Nigeria. People who carry the Bible and the Quran. If the religions of this world did not come together, the Antichrist cannot come because we will be divided. And the devil is merging everything together before our very eyes. And we are still here looking for miracles. Why the devil is doing underground work and take, trying to take over the world from us. Just Thursday, this Thursday, Thursday, 26th, Thursday, a law was passed in South Korea that now uh, for the past 50 something years adultery was uh, a crime a punishable offense but now you are free to commit adultery and the moment the moment i'm talking about this week 26 thursday the moment this law was passed condom and eh, the price of condom was shut up by 15 percent people were rushing condom because if, if, if you commit adultery before, you go for two years imprisonment. Whether the man and the person that fornicates with the married person will also get two years imprisonment. So you see that people are now looking at the society and said, what do we do now? What do we do? Let's do something. Let's push towards from the side of God and push towards the side of Satan. There is a school on ground now, teaching people. And it's called face to faith. Face to faith. Established by Tony Blair, former British Prime Minister. And he's a member of this Christian. He said he reads the Quran and the Bible daily. If a law is passed in Nigeria today, that before you get employment because of this uh, religious crisis, you have to become a member of Christlam. I know there are Christians who are ready to go into it. I say, hey, it's just the same God now. Bring some more from here, a little to the left, a little to the right, a little from the right, a little from the left. Let's merge them together. There are prominent preachers in the world who are pushing this thought. A man was being interviewed in CNN. He has 48,000 members, attenders in a single church. They asked him, are Muslims going to church, going to, to heaven too? He said, I can't judge them. My own is to preach the love of God. I'm preaching the love of God. God should judge them. But I know that God loves everybody. So one of them was asked face to face. He said, are you saying that Buddhist, Islam, uh, all these other religions, you mean they are going to heaven too? He said, heaven is wide. Heaven will accommodate all of them. Merging the religions of this world together. If you even look at our churches today, is the church pure now? Is the church pure? I don't like your answer. We have borrowed so much from the world and brought them into the church because we want members. We are looking for members. Everywhere, a pastor can go to any land. A, this 21st century pastor can go to any land to get power. And if we possess people more in the name of working for God. The Bible says, the Lord knows the foundation of the Lord. Stand sure that the Lord knows those 
Who are his? And today, let me just read something out to us. The strategy, the strategic word of this face-to-face -face school states that our face-to-face -face schools, schools program is designed for 12 to 17 year olds. Is already active in more than 20 countries around the world. Through education, we provide young people with the knowledge and skills to understand other religions and cultural perspectives and to resist extremist voices. Face to faith works across the world, delivering pioneering education program to help prevent religious conflict and extremism. So, they are preaching peace and said, the only way we can get peace, let's bring out Christianity. And then mix it with other religions. Where are we heading to? Where are we heading to in this world? I watched a man for about two, two hours who set up a church. White Tate Chapel in Virginia. Pastor Alan Parker. You go to this church, if you must be a member, just the way we have vestry here, you must be a member, you have a changing room where you go and remove your clothes. You remove your clothes and come as you are. Come to church and sit down naked. And the pastor himself, Alan Parker, will be preaching to you naked. Even the interview, himself and the wife, they were sitting down naked. He said, that is the call of God. And he has members in his church calling on Jesus. Some of those who come to church naked, all of you, if you come to church half naked yet, yeah, you have your own separate heaven. Because I, I wonder the kind of heaven some people are walking towards. Is it the heaven of the holy God? Is it that same heaven? Where nothing or clean can assess. Or is it the heaven that is downward in the abyss? Even in 1940, here, yeah, women were not putting on trousers in the U.S. In 1940, they were not putting on trousers. You say now, you broke lot. Me, I say, I don't go keep quiet. I know, say, even make friends with one or you both, whether it's 80 years, may you ask and say, now like this, they dress before. He go tell you, say, now Satan just introduced that. You can wear trousers, you can dress naked, open your bootos, open your breasts, eh, and come to church. Don't worry. There is a place for you. This is the end time. The Bible says that men will be haters of God. And they will like preachers of their own. People are going to erect. You know, not say some politicians get preachers for themselves. Even people will not get money to pay preachers, to pay pastors. They, they get the church that they go. You get church where that they go. Where miracle be the God. And where God, no, they look at the body, where they look only the hearts. We have a problem. We have to stand up for the truth we know. If this is the kind of Christianity I will hand over to the next generation, the way I am receiving it now, if this is the type I'm going to hand over to the next generation, then there is trouble. I have to do my part. Now, now when I day alive, so I go preach. I know there is a day that is coming. Talk. I no go feel talk again. That one, you no go see him forever and ever. No be that the year one song, Venerable Sibe. That they sing, you no go die at all. You no go see that. Now they say this song correct today or this afternoon. 
So you will not die at all. Say amen. God bless you. You go die here forever. Me, I know say I go die. Yo. I know say I go die. And I know the worst thing be say, I don't even know when. But you, you will never die at all. God will give you strong head. He go give you yes when no get limits. You like that prayer? Say amen. So you go go to. Praise the Lord. It is very disappointing that even with my few age, my few years, I know there are drastic changes in Christianity. Artificial eyelash, how many years he come? He don't reach 15 years when he come here. But just look at the way, see, with this generation, this generation, these children we are just giving birth to now. If you ask them, what is the difference between dressing to look beautiful and dressing to look sexy? They're not going to know more. Because the dressing of today is to look sexy. And I even they see people go, wear dress, they go, right? Sexy babe. New, in, I see one married woman, he wears shirt. He the right to say, uh, new babe in town. Marriage woman, I said, so you are the new babe in town. Every boy should come to you now. Abi, you said that my husband buy him for me. Make that man go get work for South Korea. Where adultery not be seen again. You can commit adultery anywhere you want. Because it's your right. You go the so booba for your wife. Let me read that something to us. If you will feel offended, let me apologize to you in advance. Because where I want to quote from now is the opposite of the Holy Bible. I want to quote an introductory statement to the Satanic Bible to us. This quote is from Anti Lave, from the Satanic Bible, written in 1969. He said, this man was a Christian when he was a boy. He grew up and he said, I can't be a Christian again. He had to set up his own religion, Satanism. He said, on Saturday night, I would see men lusting after half-naked girls, dancing at the carnivals, and on Sunday morning, when I was playing organ for 10 show evangelists at the other end of the carnival, carnival lot, I would see these same men sitting in the pews, with their wives and children, asking God to forgive them and purge them of their carnal desires. If they happen, this is the happen for our time. If Christians were they this worry, no, they go be a parlor joint again. They go shut them. Now, last year, last year, somebody go, he don't drink, finish, he can't go carry a shower for there. This this our neighbor house for you. Our neighbor upstairs where they are. You go carry a shower. As he just turn around like this. Now you get accident for there. Boom. You see the motto? Last year, the motto, that uh, water. Yes, I have a witness here. One of the prostitutes ran down and said, one of the prostitutes they carried died immediately. He said, ah, I won't enter this motor before. I won't enter this motor for hospital. He said, I won't enter. I found my key. Tire I make I change. I don't see key. The driver too. Gone. Where these people go so? Now you say, yeah. The same Christians. We be the ones that we chase small, small girls, disversioning, deflowering small, small girls all over the place. Today now, virgin scarce. Who make and scarce? Who make virgin scarce?
Let me finish this quotation. And the next Sunday, they would be back at the carnival or some other place of indulgence. I knew then that the Christian church thrives on hypocrisy and that man's carnal nature will act no matter how much it is purged or caught by any white light religion. Some of us, they make Christianity difficult for people to enter. Now, confusion we bring. Confusion, now some of us bring. There is a hymn, we say, He said, Jesus needs sinners. Spread this word. Yes! He came for those who are sick. He came for sinners. To make friends with sinners. And Jesus is a friend of sinners. But can somebody make friendship with Jesus for 10 years and remain a fornicator? 10 years. Take the body of Jesus, drink the blood of Jesus, and say, Jesus, we are one. Yet that person... If he never reach, he go to look time. Go for time, don't reach. This person, why he tell me like this? I go deal with him today. After 20 years in church. So some of us, now confusion, no? now we bring it to Christianity. And somebody caught that kind of confusion, and this is what he is saying. Somebody born into a Christian home. Also, quickly, let's turn to Revelation 13, 17. And that no man, let me start from 16. And he cursed all, that means the Antichrist, cursed all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell. Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. If you talk about economy, the devil will try to capture the economy of this world and make use of it to unite the whole world. Today, we are making plans as Africa to have one currency. So that with that currency, you can travel to any African country and buy from there. And also, United Nations, that means the world organization, they are making plans to bring one world currency to reduce, to, to, re, to replace the dollar, the US dollar. So that you don't have stress in transacting business. And it will be fine. But there is a bet. Because it will give the devil so much power. Now Nigeria will just so with the complain. Say some cabas they carry our money through away. The money where they leave this Nigeria in a year. In fact, some of those a, a, a developed countries should return our money to us. If not, God will judge them. They should return our billions of nairas to us. If not, God and some of them have started receiving those judgments. They should bring our money back. Not some madmen who call themselves politicians. We carry billions, money that a whole nation is supposed to live on. They will carry it and dump it somewhere. How many shiki you feel it for one day? How many beds you go sleep put for one night? How many houses you go spread yourself? Can you be in 10 places at the same time? So, I, if I call them mad people, they are mad. Now, who mad? They throw away a gold, say, you don't need them. Say, they disturb me, go throw away. They carry our money. Every year, they go, they seize our money. You be billion, billion. Sometimes, when you read this money, you get some kind of headache, where daughter no fit treat. Today, 
They are making serious plans to unite the whole world. Is it true that football is bringing peace? Is football really bringing peace? When they are doing competition, you never watch fights for feed and eating. It's part of the plan to unite the world. And they are building amusement parks for us, building, bringing new, so people can stay on their phone for 12 hours playing games. They don't have problem. And if you see some of these games, now demons, they inside. Shrines, now they inside. When they play, finish, they go, come, go for deliverance, say, that they see snake, that they see this, that they see demon. Demons, one of them was saying, the demon in his phone came out of the phone and was pursuing him in a dream. You think these things, why you not play Ludo, Ludo, why you not play Ludo? Why you not play what, honorary what, if you need game? Now the one where they draw demon put, now that one you they like. If you look at the one dollar B, you see a statement there. It's talking about the dawn of a new world order. And they are looking towards it. When a president is rising up in, 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 in the U.S., they hand over the same agenda to that president. This is where we are going. Make sure you get there. And the official term, let me read the official term of the new world order. In one way or the other, we are being controlled. We are saying everything is okay, but everything is not okay. He said, a supranational authority to regulate world commercial and industry, world commerce and industry, an international organization that will control the production and the consumption of oil, an international currency that will replace the dollar. All these things are working out in the name of global peace. Which day I went to the bank. They say, ah, you cannot cash money now because there is a bank verification number. I say, ah, they work. They say, ah, this number now, if we give you this number, any account number you have, you submit this same number. Without this number, you cannot cash money. I say, yes, now small, small, it they come. Until everybody in Nigeria will be tagged. They have started tagging people already. I don't want to measure any church, but there is a church in Rome. When some documents, vital documents, were exposed and given to journalists, the head said, no, I'm going to monitor everybody. He had to ship his, his confidential workers, some of the staff, that handle a confidential document. He shipped them. He gave them microchip so that he would be able to monitor their movement. This world we are in is turning upside down before our very eyes. And we they argue whether man of God, is it good to wear Brazilian hair from the temple of one God or to use India hair where they don't give juju, I do. Say, I don't get anything to take my hair. Then you, when they look for beauty, you want to look sexy. You go go buy this temple and you go put them on. And when Bible says, abstain from things dedicated to idols. Where are we? Are we prepared to meet Jesus? Are we prepared to meet our master? He's coming. And he's coming for a holy church. He's not coming for a miracle church. Miracle has become God today. Anyhow you get it, get it, catch your miracle. At all costs, catch it. The same people that wear rapper, if you see person wear tie wrapper, person wear no tie wrapper before. He called tie wrapper from waist here. 
Young girl, all some women, they tie rapper from waist here. Yeah, where the rapper they touch girl? No, say he wears something. Now forget, now he tie the rapper. I asked one, one day, I said, So rapper, they fit you like this. You wear that from her, I've been a forget. Yes, he did. I talk again. I want to say, eh, Pastor, me go. I say, eh, you find no, so you get these jeans, these trousers, and now you know they wear a come church. I say, you fine. Anybody shall let you tell and say, now nah, me, say, me, you wear and come. Wear and come. You never hear say, God, now omnipresence. God, they hear. If God, the God went here, not be in the church. Wear and come now. Let us assess ourselves whether we are ready. The Bible says, if the righteous man will be scarcely saved, that means, be, you know, as when you say scarcely, scarcely saved, he said, where will the unbeliever and those who are not serious, where will they find themselves? If you dare church, over two years now, and you see the girl boyfriend, you see the girl girlfriend, you are doing yourself. If you are married, you are in this house. See, in hell, there are going to be beautiful girls in hell. They will all be naked. If you have the lock, lock in quotes, and you find yourself there, ah, don't worry, you have enough girls, enough men there. You can do anything you want to do there. If in the midst of the fire, you will be able to perform. Go ahead. Let's be on our feet. If somebody was dying and he said, must I go and empty handed? He said, what, what will I give to my God for all the miracles I received? All the disturbance I gave to the men of God. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. And even from help. I got from the church. All these ones now. Straight to hell. Bible said the road where they lead to destruction. It depends me or it depends me for some people where well. It depends me because I know there are many people that are going to hell. They are not ready for Jesus. In fact, they don't need Jesus. Jesus should just give them the miracle. They are ready for hell. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one come to the Father except by him. And we lift up our two hands. Do you have anything to surrender before God? Is there anything you must surrender before this great God? He is a holy God. He is a holy God. Read First Peter chapter 1, 15 to 17. And see what it is saying. He's going to judge every man. The Bible says, save the Lord with fear. With fear and trembling. Now there is no more fear. There is no more trembling. People can wear anything to the house of God. People can steal phone. A pastor will be in church. Reverend Edgar was just conducting baptism there. They stole his phone. This month, they sold his phone. Even in his house, somebody had to go there and carry his tab. Man of God, they ask the prayer. They pray for maybe for that person. He enters. Who they ask? You don't see anybody. He carry his tab. Waka. Now pagan, now juju priest, come carry him. If there is anything to hand over, say, Lord, I surrender to you. Talk to the Lord, I surrender to you. You are coming for a holy church. You are not coming for a church that is hungry after miracle and has no need for this holy God. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and be holy. Without which no man shall see the Lord. If we do all that we have been asked to do, 
but lack holiness. We will never see the kingdom of God. Round up your prayer. Can we talk to the Lord again? The Lord, work on me now. Help me to make use of your grace. Everything you can do to save my soul, work on me now. If you are lost, tell the Lord, Lord, I am lost. I am lost. This is me. I come before you the way I am. This is my hypocrisy before you. Lord, work on me. Work on me. Work on this soul. Yeah, your people. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and be holy. Without which no man shall see the Lord. If we do all that we have been asked to do, but lack holiness, we will never see the kingdom of God. Round up your prayer. Can we talk to the Lord again? The Lord, work on me now. Help me to make use of your grace. Everything you can do to save my soul, work on me now. If you are lost, tell the Lord, Lord, I am lost. I am lost. This is me. I come before you the way I am. This is my hypocrisy before you. Lord, work on me. Work on me. Work on this soul. Hear your people, oh Lord. Hear your children, oh Father. If we deserve mercy, it should be now. If we deserve the grace of God, let it be now. A time is coming where there shall be no more grace. Where Christians shall call on the blood of Jesus and it will be powerless. A time is coming when people are going to pay with their own blood. Round up your prayer. Listen to this scripture before I pray. Just listen. Don't open your Bible. Work on me. Work on me. Work on this soul. Hear yeah, your people, oh Lord. Yea, your children, oh Father. If we deserve mercy, it should be now. If we deserve the grace of God, let it be now. A time is coming where there shall be no more grace. Where Christians shall call on the blood of Jesus and it will be powerless. A time is coming when people are going to pay with their own blood. Round up your prayer. Listen to this scripture before I pray. Just listen. Don't open your Bible. You can write it down if you please. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 16. He said, when I heard, my belly trembled. No blood. Round up your prayer. Listen to this scripture before I pray. Just listen. Don't open your Bible. You can write it down if you please. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 16. 
He said, when I heard, my belly trembled. My lips quivered at the voice. Rottenness entered into my bones. And I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he cometh up unto the people, he will invade them with his troops. This is somebody who had the fear of the Lord. He said, when I heard about the, when I heard the judgment of God, I quivered. I became voice. Rottenness enters, entered, into, entered into my bones. And I trembled in myself. I trembled in myself. That, that I might rest in the day of trouble. When it cometh up unto the day of trouble. When it cometh up unto the people. He will invade up unto the people. He will invade them with his troops. This is somebody who had the fear of the Lord. He said, when I, heard about the, when I heard the judgment of God, I quivered. I became afraid. I trembled in myself so that I will have rest tomorrow. I quivered. I, quivered. I became afraid. I trembled in myself so that I will have rest tomorrow. If we tremble before him today, our rest will be guaranteed tomorrow. But if we say, nothing will happen tomorrow. It is a very horrible thing to fall into the hands of this lady. But if he said, nothing will happen tomorrow, it is a very horrible thing to fall into the hands of this living God. Let's lift up our two hands as we round up. Jesus, you have suffered for us on the cross. You paid it all. Jesus, you We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com Email us at hosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.